Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So I have two questions for you. Show of hands. Do you love Jesus? There's some people out there not raising their hands. <laughs> And the next question, for those of you that keep your hands up, those of you that say you love Jesus, keep your hand up. And and I want you to keep your hand up if you keep all of his commandments. I might be able to believe that. (laughs) Maybe. Probably not, though. Right? That's, That's a pretty tough statement there to start this whole reading out with, right? Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me... You will keep my commandments. So, does that mean if we don't keep the commandments that we don't really love Jesus? Or does that mean that because some of the commandments are hard for us to keep, that there's other things at play here? But before we get back to that, let's, let's go over to Athens for a moment. Right? Our first reading this morning is from Acts. And Paul is at the Areopagus. That's just a fun word to say. Arapagus. What does Arapagus mean? What? You don't know? What? No, it has an actual name. There's actually churches named Arapagus. There's, there's a big one, I think, in um, Michigan. Or maybe Minnesota. Arapagus is two Greek words. One is Eros and Pegas. Pegas means big rock. Or hill. And Eros is the god of war, which is also known as Mars. So if you've ever heard of Mars Hill, Mars Hill is actually Oropagus. But Oropagus was the place in Athens just below Athena's temple. And it was the place where people would gather to have conversation. It's the place in the marketplace where scholars would gather to discuss topics. It's the place where people would come together to talk about the the things that are happening today, right? It's a place where you would go and talk about politics and religion and all of those things, right? And so Paul shows up and starts talking to them. And he talks to them about how he's seen all around their places that they have altars. And what do their altars say? To an unknown God. It's an altar to an unknown God. How many of us have unknown gods? Right? I asked you, if, do you love Jesus? Right? Because Jesus is our God, right? We, we worship God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and Paul talks to the Athenians about how they have altars set up all around their place to unknown gods. And he comes in and he talks to them about the things that he saw, about how they're very devout people, right? Paul stood there and he went throughout the city looking carefully for your objects of worship and found the altar with that in Scripture. And he knows that they're very devout people looking to things that they need to. And they're searching and groping for God, right? It said, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for Him and maybe find Him. How many of us are searching for God? And here's the thing. When we search for God, are we actually looking for God? Or are we looking for the God that we want? I I saw some wide eyes over here. Right? Because these past four days, three days, it seems like a lot longer than three days. Nancy, Karis, and I... uh, we're at a, our Senate Assembly at the KI Center in, in Green Bay. And we talked about resolutions. And one of the resolutions was written by a pastor friend of mine, Rich Block. Um, and actually he wrote two. But the one that he got up and very passionately spoke for was one on child hunger. Right? How there's children in our area. There's children who live probably across the street from you that get food from their school during the week to take home or they eat food at the school and they may not have food to eat on the weekends. 
Do you know anybody like that? Most people keep that very well hidden so that other people don't know that they're having those problems. Those people are out there. And those are the people that God calls us to look for and to search for and to be there for. Those are the people that we are to seek out or to know about. Those are the people that we are to give help to. But we don't see them. Why don't we see them? Several reasons. And probably the biggest one, and here I speak for myself, and you can say whether or not you agree with me. One of them is we don't want to see them. Because if I see them, then I've got to do something about it. And if I see them, then I've got to give up my God. Because the real God has called me to do something about this, right? Each one of us has an unknown God. If you want me to help you figure out what it is, show me your checkbook. How many takers? I'll show you mine too. Right? We all have something that we're seeking after. We all have something that we're going after. Because we all feel like we've got that hole inside of us that we've got to fill. We've got to have that, those things in life or those things to make us whole. When God told us, Jesus told us in the, in the gospel that he has always been with us. And because we loved him and we followed him and we do what he asks us to do, he's going to give us, what is he going to give us? What does the reading say in John? Look it up. Open it up. What does it say? Jesus says, I'm going to give to you. No, I'm going to give to you. There's a word before advocate. Another advocate. I'm going to give to you another. What does that mean? There already is one. And who is that? It's not me. It's not you. All right, that's it. Everybody's unconfirmed. You're all going back to start over. <laughs> Jesus. It's Jesus is your advocate. Because then what did he go on to say to the disciples? He says, soon the world is not going to see me, but you are going to see me because you have always been walking with me and you have been following and doing what I've called you to do. Jesus is always with us. And Jesus told the disciples right here, just as he tells you, I'm going to give you another advocate. I'm going to give you the spirit to come alongside with me and you and to walk into the world to do the things that we need to do. We don't have to be like the Athenians. We don't have to search after those, those lost gods, those unknown gods. We don't have to search and grope because Jesus is standing right there before you saying, all you've got to do is follow me and do what I'm asking you to do. I'm always going to be with you and the Spirit's going to come along with us. Because it's going to be hard. Peter talked about that, right? The letter to 1 Peter. Be aware that people are going to ask you because if we actually follow after Jesus, we're going to do things that other people think are weird, right? We're going to help the poor. We're going to help the people that nobody else is going to want to help. And we're going to be happy about it. And we're not going to have all the toys and the things that everybody else has, but we're still going to be happy about it. And why? Why are we happy about it? Because we've got Jesus. And that means more than anything else ever could. And first Peter tells the people that it was written to, to be ready to give an accounting of that in gentleness and reverence to know that God is always with us because he's promised to be there. Jesus told the disciples that he was always going to be with them. Jesus told the disciples he was going to give them another helper. He gives you a sponge. But unlike the sponge that then like this sponge, right, that'll. After a while, it's going to get pretty nasty and we're going to have to throw it away. The Holy Spirit never does. The Holy Spirit is perfectly with you all the time. Even when we don't realize it. And that's how we can be advocates for other people. Because God has come to us. So don't worship an unknown God. Don't go seeking after something that's not going to fill that hole. 
But follow after Jesus and know that He's always going to be with you. Remembering that He's given us the Holy Spirit to walk out into the world and to do what He's called us to do. So go into the world and love everyone as Jesus loved you, knowing that He's given you the power to do that.